SOLIDJS comes with its own highly performant loop component called FOR. In this lesson, we will look at this component and how it is better than the standard React array map that you might be familiar with. So let's go. We start off with an empty SOLIDJS project that we set up in the previous lesson and I will leave a link to that in the description if you want to go ahead and watch that. Right now, this particular application is completely empty. So if we run npm start and visit localhost 3000, you can see that we are greeted with an empty white page. Now let's create a reusable SOLIDJS component. We will create this file called counter.tsx. First off, we bring in the component type from SOLIDJS as well as the create signal utility function, which is the SOLIDJS version of use state. Now for our component, we will create this function called create counter, which will essentially manage any of the state that our counter component needs. Within this function, we create a signal for our current count and initialize it to zero. And then we return an object containing an accessor for the current count, as well as a function to modify the count to a new value. Now, these are the props that the counter component expects to be passed in. However, instead of having to hand code this particular counter props type, we can actually infer it as the return type of our create counter function. And finally, we have a counter component, which accepts these props and simply renders out the current count into a paragraph tag, as well as the button that you can click to increase the count by one. So we have these three things. We have a counter component, we have the props that the counter component expects, and then we have this utility function that can be used to create any of the props that the counter needs. Now let's use this counter component within our main app. The first thing that we do within our app module is to bring in the three exports from the counter module, which is create counter as well as counter props and then the counter component. Now, whenever we want to use a counter component, it will be a two step process. First, we will call create counter to get the props that are needed for the counter component. And then we will render the counter component and pass in the props that are generated by the create counter call. So as an example, if we need two counter components, we make two calls to create counter. And then we use the individual results within the individual counter components. Now at this point, if we jump into the UI, we should see two counter components with their own individual incrementing count buttons and the individual display of the current count. Now we've intentionally created these create counter functions because they allow us much greater control of the individual counters and much greater reuse for the consumers. For example, if you wanted to list out the total sum of both of the counters, because we have access to that value as returned by the create counters, we can do that within this particular app component. So we click one counter three times and the other one six times, and you can see that the total count is nine. This is a general pattern that shows up in UI programming all the time, where you have different portions of reusable UI. However, they impact other portions of the UI, and therefore it is a good idea to isolate the state from the rendering of the individual components. Now, everything that I've shown right now, you could pretty much create with React as well. For example, you can create a use component hook and use that to manage the state of your component. However, there is one fundamental difference that makes this particular version of SOLIDJS better than the React alternative. And that is that you can use create component in a loop, which is not something that you can do with React hooks. So let's jump back in and take a look. Now, if you wanted to create an array of counter components, we can do that quite easily by first creating an array signal to manage the number of counters that we are intending to create. We initialize the counters to an empty array, and then we provide this utility function to update the number of counters to be the existing counters, plus a new one created by a call to create counter. Now that's a fundamental difference between React and SOLIDJS. Within React, you cannot call a hook within an arbitrary function. However, within SOLIDJS, calling create counter within this function called add counter is perfectly fine. Now, finally, we can use this array of counter props to create an array of counter components. And for that within SOLIDJS, we have this thing called the for component. You pass in the array of items that you want to loop over into the each attribute. Here we want to loop over all of the counters and that is what we pass in. The for component takes a single child, which is essentially the function that you would pass into array.map. Here we want to take the individual counter props and map them into counter components. Notice that you do not have to provide any key to the individual items that you are rendering within the for loop as SOLIDJS will automatically look at the individual items within the counters array 
and map them to the rendered counter components. So if a counter prop does not change, then that counter component does not need to re-render. Now for the final part of this demonstration, we will create this button that you can click to add new counters, as well as a paragraph that shows the sum of all of the counters within the counter array with a simple array reduce. And now if you jump to the UI, you can see we start off with a count zero, we add a few counters, then we go ahead and click the individual counters, and the total count continues to update as you would expect. Now something that might be bothering you is the fact that SolidJS has created its own for component instead of leveraging the built-in JavaScript array map method, which is something that React does. However, if you want your React application to be highly performant, you'd actually end up writing this component yourself as well. Let's look at a real world example from React Spectrum, which is Adobe's design system. Within the React Spectrum docs, there is a section that is dedicated to collection components and over here you can see the mention of why not use array.map. For example, within the listbox component, you could use animals.map to list the individual items. However, this will not perform quite as nice as using the built-in listbox items, which is something that React Spectrum provides. This listbox items duo as well as the render function is very similar to the for each render function that we just saw within SolidJS. The fact that you can store signals in a loop, which is not something that you can do with hooks, along with the built-in highly performant for component, makes SolidJS a much better choice for large collections of data in my mind, and it's just one of the many reasons why SolidJS blows anything else out of the water. And that's all for this lesson. Smash that like and subscribe for more coding tips and tricks, and I will see you in the next one.